Hey, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling 22. Z. How you guys doing? Joe here. Thanks for checking out another video. To those of you that uh, follow me on the regular, you'll know that I just recently had some pretty good surgery. I had my Achilles tendon lengthened as well as uh, amputation. I am now known as No Toe Joe, and uh, I'm going to be slowly getting back into the swing of things. So you'll have to be patient with me. So I thought today we'd do kind of just an easy video. We're not going to be going super like in depth on anything today. Just wanted to show you a couple of new firearms I picked up for the channel. They're actually used firearms, but uh, new firearms as well as another optic I picked up. But uh, two different locations for these purchases. This one came from uh, Bears Trading Post, which is in Winchester, Virginia, my buddy's pawn shop because he likes to buy estates and large collections, and this was in there, and he thought I'd like it, and he was 100% correct, because I told him I was looking for a cheap little 22. He also has a 308 that I'm picking up, but I won't be able to pick that up till next week. But uh, yeah, this is one of them. This is a late 60s, early 70s Squire Bingham, manufactured by Arms Corps in the Philippines. These were sold through Kmart, and it's pretty cool. And as you can see, looking at the firearm behind it, that it's basically a ripoff of the Savage 64, which in itself is modeled after a Winchester rifle. But this guy came in a bundle with another one that I have to get my buddy Daniel to bring me, which is a Mod 1600. And I'll do a separate video on that one, because that one's just kind of cool on its own, but we'll be talking about that too. But this one is a 22 long rifle only. Uh, semi-automatic box fed uh, I don't have the original mag the only mag I currently have pardon me I'm doing the butt shuffle on a chair is this guy this is a mag from the mod 16 but as you can see it does work in here it just looks a little awkward and when I get the mod 16 back from Daniel. I will put it up here so you can see how cool that is. But yeah, 15 round magazine, which is decent capacity, especially for something this old. And it worked really well. I was surprised because this one was in pretty rough shape comparative to the other one. You can see the bolt has a lot of corrosion on it. I actually had to work that bolt for about an hour. I took the entire receiver out of this guy, just held in with one screw down there. And it actually turns out I can buy these stocks pretty cheap, but I'm going to actually refinish this one because I want to make it look good steel wool down the whole barrel probably maybe even sand it down and then I'm going to re-blue the barrel make it look really nice had no uh mount for like rings like that one has it just had the rear leaf sight on it I'm probably going to just leave that there and keep using this we actually took this to the range and put a primary arms ACSS Cyclops on it which is like a $300 optic on what was basically a $75 gun. Uh, again, he gave me this one with the other one, which was pretty damn cool, and I thought it was interesting. Squire Bingham is owned wholly by Arms Corps now, and Arms Corps still sells a gun with this receiver called the Model 20, just like this one. This is the Model 20, but they also do in the Mod 1600, which is their version of a Colt. Pretty decent shooter. I was actually very surprised. Very light shooting, 20 inch barrel. It's a pretty heavy barrel. And I was impressed by the accuracy, especially considering this one probably sat in something for a while. So I'm looking forward to refinishing this one. I'm kind of getting into 22 shooting because it's cheap. And you know, when I go out and after I'm done shooting like my 45 ACP and my nine millimeter stuff, it's fun to just kind of relax a little bit, fire off some 22s. Because you can sit and fire, you know, a couple of hundred at 22 and you spend 15, 20 bucks. Whereas a couple of hundred rounds of 45 is, you know, you're talking about a hundred bucks. So it actually makes sense. This one came from Liberty Arms, Harrisonburg, Virginia. Google them. I can't list them in the description. But this one is a 22 as well. This is the Savage model. 64, which is actually modeled after a Winchester, which was pretty cool when I found that out. Uh, this is a synthetic stock one, but it was originally sold with a wood stock, also a 20 inch barrel. And as you can see, the, the, the functions on this one and this one are pretty much the same. It has the same thumb type safety up here, which depending on how you shoot, if you're a lefty, it's actually really easy to hit. But as a righty, 
uh, yeah, you guys got to hit it before you start shooting, but since it's not a single shot rifle, it, that doesn't really matter. But as you can see, the functionality is very much the same between those two rifles. But this one came in on trade, and I wanted a newer 22 long rifle, especially if I'm going to take that one apart. I don't want to not have a 22 of it, excuse me, a 22 rifle available because I want to do some uh, comparisons between 22 and high powered uh, pellet guns. So that's going to be coming. But the guy traded this in. He actually bought it from us last year and he decided he wanted something smaller. So we wound up trading him for a 22 Cricket. And uh, yeah, I think we did pretty good on it. It has a Amazon special uh, scope on it. I'll look it up if I can find that brand. I'll link to this one. It's kind of cool. It's inexpensive and it actually has a lighter reticle. The battery in this one's dead right now, but it has green and red reticles that light up on the crosshair. I doubt I can get the crosshair on camera. Oh yeah, so it's just your basic crosshair and then it does light up when you turn it on when the battery isn't dead. But it is a, looks like a not sure what the magnification magnification is. Oh, there it is. Three uh, by nine to three to nine by forty power. Uh, I'm sure it gets some parallax issues when you're talking about a forty-five fifty dollar scope when you go full magnifications. But it'll be interesting to see how it shoots. You can see it's a little off center. The rear sight, the leaf spring, is actually interfering with the front of the optic. Daniel uh, mounted the optic on there. It was on a piece of pick rail and it was a super high uh, height overbore. So I may actually wind up putting that style back on it or I may just knock that rear front, uh, excuse me, the rear sight off so that the front of the optic can clear it. But I'm interested in taking this one out and shooting it. The guy didn't shoot it too much. Uh, 22 long rifle as well. Box fed mag. You can see he even left a sticker on it. So that's pretty interesting. And yeah, these came up. They were super inexpensive. Uh, again, I help out down at Liberty Arms once or twice a month. And sometimes I'll just take something for my effort. Uh, one thing I did, though, was I wanted to upgrade my optic. The 407K is nice, but there have been advancements in optics since then. And this is the 507C, which is the solar power capable optic with a nice reticle, but it also, see if I can get that on camera. There you go. You can see it's actually, well, if it's the lights blown out on it, but it actually has a dot and a reticle around it, as well as the capability of charging by solar. It's a little bit bigger than the K series. The K is a micro red dot. This is like an RDR size. So this will fit on most standard size pistols. I was considering going with the 507K, which has the same reticle, but it doesn't have the solar ability. But I've also decided not to do that because most of my guns are full size anyway. So I might as well go with something that I really like. These are available through Liberty Arms. There's the phone number, by the way. If you pause the video, give them a call. Tell them you're looking for one. We basically sell them for what they're, they're going for everywhere. But you can order these off their website as well. But for an optic that's... A pretty good looking optic and I like the way the 407 shot and I like the way his 507 shot and the Sig Romeo Zero is a decent one too so just get a quality optic and you'll be good to go. So that's about it for this video. I know it's not like a super breakdown. I'm not taking apart the guns but I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a follow-up video after the surgery. I am on pain meds so I'm sure my brain is a little bit addle pitted, piddle added, well, you know, uh, addle pated and I'll get back into this as we go into the next week. I have range video shooting the other gun. Uh, we haven't taken that one to the range yet, of course. I just got that one from Daniel today. Uh, I took it in on trade a week ago before my surgery, but I just decided I wanted it. And we'll be following up with some more shooting videos on the channel. So, again, I do apologize. That has been making things difficult for me. And uh, just moving it right then, I just tweaked my ankle and... If any of you have ever had your Achilles tendon lengthened, you'll know why that hurts. So I'm done. I'm out. Go ahead and check out Liberty Arms and Bears Trading Post. If you contact either of those, tell them Joe sent you, Joe from the Jiminy Show. That way they know that it's working because they got some cool stuff that I want to check out both places. 
and the uh, more traffic that you guys give them, the more likely they are to let me borrow stuff and give me good deals on stuff. So like, share, comment, use my Amazon affiliate links, all that good stuff, and come back for the next one because, as always, I'll talk to you later.